happening. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 unscripted moments from The Office. <laughs> I guess that makes me the devil. <laughs> you are. You said. -da 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 -do. For this list, we'll be going over the best improvised or otherwise unplanned moments from the American version of the sitcom The Office. To be clear, we have to have found proof they weren't scripted through, which we did using the best of our abilities. What's your favorite reported or confirmed improvised moment from The Office? Be sure to let us know about any in the comments. Number 10. Santa Giggles Michael Scott isn't the most understanding of bosses some of the time, so when Jim lets Phyllis play the office Santa, Michael takes it personally. Take it back. That is absurd. No. I'm not no. Do that. Of course, he'll do anything to prove he's the superior Santa, and that includes letting Kevin, a heavier gentleman, sit on his lap. When can I sit on your lap? Right now. Come on over here, big boy. There we go. Oh my God. Oh, that's really comfortable. <sighs> What follows is awkward comedic gold, as Kevin waffles about what he wants for Christmas and Michael desperately tries to get his accountant to get off of him. I really don't want to mess up on this list. Damn it, Kevin, come on. Several of the actors in the background, including Mindy Kaling as Kelly and Ed Helms as Andy, can be seen visibly smiling or trying not to laugh. Ed Helms even ducks away from the camera between a few shots, reportedly to hide his laughter. I didn't even get to tell you what I wanted. Okay, you know what you get? You get a thousand helium balloons attached to you so Santa doesn't have to go through this again. Awesome. Number 9. Sale Fail Speaking of Ed Helms, he and Steve Carell have several improvised moments during this double-length episode. You know, if you want your laundry done right, I used to work at Abercrombie. so. Pretty good folder. Firstly, according to DVD commentary, much of Michael and Andy's sales pitch during the episode was improvised. Their potential client's look of bewilderment at Andy using a sniper rifle on a shark was real, since he had no idea the two of them would be going off script. Caught an 80-pound shark off Montauk. It's in the Hamptons. Mm -hmm. My dad's got a 42-foot bay liner, sniped it with a rifle from the crow's nest. Another improvised moment occurred during the second half when Andy tries to suck up to Michael after the latter talks to Pam. According to Helms in the episode's commentary, the script wasn't specific on what awkward things he had to say, so he made up Andy's nonsensical responses. What did I say? You said, ra da 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 do <laughs> Which is like, right on. Pam was like, blah, 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 and you were like, yeah. Nailed it. Number 8. Seed. Dwight Schrute can get pretty weird. So where's the sales office? When you are ready to see the sales office, the sales office will present itself to you. In order to bring Ryan Howard into the ranks of Dunder Mifflin salespeople, he decides to stage an elaborate initiation for the former temp at his beet farm. This begins with having Ryan plant a beet seed in a field, which Dwight likens to Dwight planting his own in Ryan. And just as you have planted your seed in the ground, I am going to plant my seed in you. Oh, I think you know what you're saying. This line, as well as Ryan's response, were not in the script, but the rest of Dwight's bizarre ritual also contained some more improv on actor Rain Wilson's part. Upon Dwight demanding Ryan fight his cousin Moe's, Ryan leaves. Ryan, Bye. Don't, Ryan, you don't have to wrestle him. Ryan, just get in the car. Ryan? Bye, Ryan. You seem nice. Where are all the animals? Wilson improvised Dwight's question to Moe's about where all the animals are. We can only imagine what role they would have played. Ryan, come on, I am sorry. I am sorry. Moe's is sorry too. Look, he sent over uh, a basket with eggs and some fat back bacon. And look, something he whittled. Number 7. Amish Dwight's bizarre background is a source of a lot of comedy for the show, but the strangest thing about it is that a lot of it was made up by Rain Wilson himself. In the episode Office Olympics, for example, he improvised the line about living on a beet farm which led to Dwight's famous homestead appearing later in the series. My grandfather left me a 60-acre working beet farm. I run it with my cousin Moe's. We sell beets to local stores and restaurants. It's a nice little farm. 
Sometimes teenagers use it for sex. In addition, while delivering a talking head scene about his father, grandfather, and great-grandfather, Dwight claims the last of these was Amish. My father's name was Dwight Schrute. My grandfather's name was Dwight Schrute. His father's name? Dwight Schrute. Amish. According to DVD commentary, Wilson originally improvised this speech during the pilot episode, only for it to be cut out. I have no problem with that. I have been recommending downsizing since I first got here. It was brought back in season two and made it to air and solidified Dwight's background. Number six, fake ailments. All right, who did this? I'm not mad, I just wanna know who did it so I can punish them. While Michael's painfully long pause from the same episode was also not quite as scripted, with sweat and tears, we're keeping the Dwight Schrute train running. When Michael puts Dwight in charge of choosing the office healthcare plan, the responsibility naturally goes to his head. Number one, inverted penis. Could you mean vagina? While looking over claims made by the employees, Dwight is angry to find people have listed symptoms to clearly made up diseases. Leprosy, flesh eating bacteria, hot dog fingers, government created killer nanorobot infection. While a few of these were in the script, several of them were invented on the spot either by the writers themselves, Wilson, or even one of his friends who was visiting the set that day. Count Choculitis is definitely real, though. Millions of families suffer every year. Number five, reaching out. Okay, this is the last Dwight one, we swear. When Dwight learns that Angela, his then ex-girlfriend, has begun dating Andy, he's absolutely heartbroken. Dwight? <laughs> Sitting alone in the stairwell, Jim goes to comfort him, relating his own heartbreak over being rejected by Pam. Yeah, I mean, she was with Roy, and uh, I just couldn't take it. It's a sweet moment between two men who are usually at each other's throats. It was awful. And it is something that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. Although every word is in the script, Dwight reaching out to Jim after Jim leaves is not. It was a bit that writer-director Paul Lieberstein came up with on the day, according to Rain Wilson on the DVD commentary. Number four, don't. Hey, uh, can I talk to you about something? One of the most famous scenes in the show's history also had a bit of improv. During casino night, Jim confesses his love for Pam to her. I'm in love with you. What? I'm really sorry if that's weird for you to hear, but I need you to... Even now, knowing that they get together, the scene is absolutely brutal to watch, as most of us have liked someone who didn't like us the same way. When Pam tries to let Jim down easy, Jim interrupts her to tell her not to tell him how much their friendship means to her. You have no idea. Don't do that. What your friendship means to me. Come on. I don't want to do that. According to Jenna Fisher on her Office Ladies podcast, Krasinski improvised his don't response, which totally wrecked her emotionally. We're right there with her. Number three, Michael Scott's tears. Oh my God, something's happening. Michael's departure from the show is an emotional one, both behind the scenes and on camera. Towards the end of his tenure as a manager, he hosts his final annual Office Award show, The Dundies, for one last time. Sorry about the delay, everybody, but we were at the DMV waiting in line. <laughs> Fall asleep right after sex. Huh, guys? Nope. Go back to the script. Although it begins poorly, the gang decides to finish back at the office. There they sing the song Seasons of Love with original lyrics to Michael. 9,986,000 minutes. That's like watching Die Hard 80,000 times. Reportedly, Steve Carell didn't know the rest of the cast were going to do this, so his emotional reaction during the scene is genuine. The tears are real, for him and for us. Yeah, okay. Well, this is gonna hurt like a mother. Number two, The Devil. One of the most awkward and hilarious episodes of The Office sees Michael and Jan, whose relationship is falling apart, throw a dinner party. The two of them make nearly everyone uncomfortable, to the point where Jim and Pam consider fleeing. Michael and Jan seem to be playing their own separate game, 
and it's called Let's See How Uncomfortable We Can Make Our Guests. And they're both winning, so I am going to make a run for it. Michael and Jen sniping at each other reaches the point where Jen compares herself to the devil, even making horns and a face. And, and I moved in and I cleaned it, so I guess that makes me the devil. <laughs> you are! She is! She is the devil! I'm in hell! <laughs> This gesture was an improvisation on actress Melora Hardin's part, and Steve Carell barely avoids breaking character with his response. With how funny this one is, we're surprised anyone could keep a straight face. You know, Pam, in Spain, they often don't even start eating until midnight. When in Rome. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Jelly beans. Angela Kinsey improvised her line about not wanting them. Michael the Tourist. Steve Carell improvised many of the New York scenes, since he kept getting recognized. Oi vey, schmier. Ball pop. The fitness orb was supposed to deflate slowly, but not for this take. Jim Halpert can't handle Michael's flasher impression. John Krasinski is visibly struggling not to break character, and we would be too. He's back! Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the kiss. You know what, I'm gonna raise the stakes. You don't, we don't, I want you to watch this. One of the series' most legendary moments was entirely off the cuff, or should it be off the lips? After Michael accidentally outs Oscar as being gay, he tries to perform damage control with all the lack of subtlety Michael is known for. During a conference, harsh words are exchanged, and in a baffling attempt to make up, Michael decides to kiss Oscar on the lips. The kiss was entirely improvised by Steve Carell, and the reaction of everyone else in the room was unscripted as well. The sheer degree of awkward absurdity here is a credit to Carell's comedic genius. Oh, come on, Dwight! Come on, man! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.